Welcome to Binary Jazz in 2024. We've been uh, off for the holidays. Yes, we've Sorry been off for the holidays. Jump in the gun confusion. Uh, and hopefully the last couple episodes were automatically published. I didn't really check. Neither. <laughs> so maybe there'll be some mysterious uh, last season episodes that come out in January if I uh, didn't do my job correctly. I think our episodes are evergreen. It's true. Except when they're not. <laughs> we rarely talk about current events, but there are occasionally some things that happen that make it into the episode that are current events. So I guess that's not true. Yeah, I mean, I think that, out of that. Yeah, I mean, I think that I think that they are evergreen in that we don't talk about things that would not be relevant outside the context in which they were discussed, but they are topical because they tend to be uh, like things we talk about tend to arise from stuff that's happening around us. Like how relevant is like all this AI talk going to be in five years? Maybe AI will just be a fad and we'll be doing something completely different with like robots and shit uh, in five years. I don't know. Um, I read a book over break. You wrote a book. No, read a book. Oh, yeah, I heard wrote too. too I was like, <laughs> uh, way to bury the lead. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, well, I read many books, but I read one that is pertinent for this conversation. I'm going to get the title wrong, so I have to reach for it here. Uh, we are Legion, we are Bob. <laughs> oh, one. someone mentioned that to me. It's uh, it's pretty delightful. Uh-huh. Uh, it's a, It's an easy read. It's... Um, uh, it's a guy that uh, pays to have his like consciousness or pays to have his brain preserved when he dies and gets like hit by a car the same day. Um, a little cliche, I guess. Um, but then uh, he is restored uh, into a computer system because they can't restore the body. So he is alive again as AI. And uh, anyway, I don't want to share too much of the story because it's consequential but um i highly recommend it i very rarely highly recommend a book i highly recommend this one uh, it was oh, a fun no, if you're doing gary's book corner does this mean i have to do allison's stock tips oh crap <laughs> yes <laughs> no yes. this is a horrible this is a horrible idea okay here's my stock tip yeah buy them you should take stock in the small things of your in your life <laughs> Microsoft got it. <laughs> <laughs> Just appreciate the small things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was your what was the book? I'm gonna write it down. We are Legion. We are Bob. We are Legion. We are Bob. Okay, got it. Uh, and it's it's delightful because there's a lot of like sci-fi references in it that are just funny and uh, probably some that I didn't even get. Like that I just missed because it was like a particular area of sci-fi that I'm just not, you know, aware of. So it it's it, it's it's a it's a very nerdy uh, read. Uh, yeah, sounds but, good. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know if I have I have I mentioned on the podcast that I'm writing a book. No, not on the podcast. No, not on. The I, podcast. I've, I've told you. But I don't. That's know that why I, I thought it. I was just like, is Chris writing a book and Gary's writing a book? I was just like, <laughs> I feel so left out. <laughs> Do not fear. <laughs> I have my undertaking is completely different. Yeah, I was I was afraid to talk about it two months the uh, too much a month ago um, because I was afraid mm-hmm. that it was going to be one of those things where I start a thing and then I just stop halfway through and don't pick it up again. Um, but that would also be okay, just as a. Yeah, but I don't, I don't, I don't like, like, I've tried this before. I've tried writing something that I was hoping to turn into a novel before, and I had this grand idea, and I didn't follow through, and then I just felt bad about it, and I didn't want to, like, say, hey, everyone, I'm writing a book, and then, like, two months later, that book thing that I was writing, yeah, it didn't happen, and, and so I feel like there's a certain amount of, like, I don't know, critical mass or, um like, uh there's, there's a point at which it it seems like okay now i can talk about it because there's enough here that even if i walked away the stuff that i have is mm-hmm. large enough that it cannot be ignored 
<laughs> yep. um, I don't know I get what you call 47 plus thousand words uh, beyond an attempt at a novel. That's some serious, serious words. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm not like, not to be just all on word count, but like I do like there is, I don't know, that's it's something there. It's like, it's the largest amount of words in one thing I have written and um mm. there and and I have it's not like I'm I've written those words and now I'm stuck. Like I have thoughts and ideas of where things are going to go and like stuff that I want to bring in. And so it's it's got like trajectory. Um and I yeah. can kind of see in my head where things are going to ultimately land. Um well in order to like sculpt a story, you need to like have enough words to sculpt <laughs> yeah yeah and it feels like like i'm realizing like i don't know there there's i i get frustrated reading books that and i guess this is particular to my uh to, to reading romance fiction uh perhaps where like i'm like skip to the good stuff <laughs> which has a very specific meaning when you're reading that particular genre, but you know, okay. Uh, but uh, I, I, there, as I'm, as I'm writing, I realize that there's a certain amount of like, like setting the scene that needs to be done in order to actually get to the point and then say, okay, here we are. And now here's the shit that happens. Right. And um and I'm kind of getting into that here's the sh here's the shit that happens after the after the setup stuff mm -hmm. which is which is interesting and I think that that feels like the downhill part of things right because like once you've set the scene then all the things that happen are kind of like just building off of what you already have as opposed to like now to start out you kind of need to like figure out like what are the parameters of this space mm -hmm. that I'm creating. And then now that you have the sandbox, you're like, oh, now we can actually now we do can play. Thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. And once that world exists, I wonder if you will find. Well, I wonder first if when you once that exists, if you will want to create a second one, and if it will be how the experience will be mm -hmm. creating a second one in the universe, since it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't. I haven't. I haven't thought beyond the context of this story to extend it into like a sequel or something. And I have had thoughts of like um, writing something else from like a totally different uh, perspective. Um, uh, I, I this 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 fiction that I'm writing now is uh, is like there's a female protagonist and my partner Aaron's like why are you writing it from a woman's perspective you're not a woman I'm like well yeah um <laughs> I love Aaron can I just say that <laughs> shout out to Aaron who doesn't <laughs> listen to this podcast <laughs> exactly does not listen she only listens to one third of the podcast um <laughs> and uh and like there's a lot of like male writers who have who have tried to write uh, and and generally failed to write very compelling female characters and who the hell am I to think that I could do better than them um but I I wanted to like write something from a perspective that was not specifically my own um and I think the next thing that I want to write is perhaps something that is in fact from a perspective that is mm. more closely tied to my own but I didn't want to start there I guess mm -hmm. so I don't know making setting in my setting obstacles in front of myself probably <laughs> it could be that the main character just switches genders by the end i'm like i don't i don't i don't know like that there's anything i've written that would be inherently broken if i just <laughs> changed it <laughs> not yet anyway it's exciting maybe after you're done gary and i will write fan fiction for <laughs> your story <laughs> that would be fun <laughs> little offshoots of like plot mm -hmm. points that we were like hey what about this character mm -hmm. yes <laughs> yeah i, I kind of like my characters which is good it's good yeah because <laughs> i imagine it's one of those things where it's like you'll get tired of it real fast if you yeah. don't have some semblance of like fondness for them <laughs> right yeah <laughs> exciting so how was the break for everyone 
that face. <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe we should maybe we should make that. <laughs> should find that frame and make that. Probably, the... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the break was good actually. It was just you know the thing with breaks is that they end, and yeah. then mm. you're like, oh, it's over now. But I do. I I love the weird liminal space between the holidays and New Year's that everyone's. Mm. We're just all like most people. I guess Boxing Week. Yeah, are like in my sphere are lucky enough to be able to take it off and just mm. kind of do this weird drift. <laughs> my parents uh, visited us, and Rhonda um, went out of town with a friend. Um, so that week was like uniquely bizarre and um like well we're gonna do a bunch to keep the kids and my parents busy so yeah we went to like a museum and a mountain and a enormous playground and uh had like the fire pit going out back like a lot and uh served uh chicken and dumpling soup on my grandma's china and like it was just like at the end of every day i was like yeah that was exhausting that was great. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a bit of a roller coaster, though. Like at the end, when you get to the point, you're just like, "Whew, all yeah. right, we did the thing." <laughs> there was like a point where, uh, and then well, and then Saturday we went with some friends to um, Cirque du Soleil. Um, oh, nice! And so uh, they have like a traveling show that's set up like 15 minutes from the house. Um, uh, Bizarre is what it's called. Um, I think and, I've seen uh, that one. It's. I mean, every Cirque show is lovely. It. You, you don't go yeah. to one and like walk away going. Oh, that, that, that. Yeah, I mean, you just right. walk away. You're like, oh, man. Yeah. Like there's, there's so many layers. There's like, I either uh, respect either... for the physicality and the beauty of the human body and like the joy of the music and it's just like, that might have actually been the one where we had gotten tickets and intended to go and then COVID hit and they canceled all their shows. So that might actually be the one mm. that I didn't see, or one of the ones I haven't seen. There's a couple. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and and then and then and then Monday was still like we were still in that space. So like that was Saturday, and that time Saturday to Tuesday was still like it felt like another week somehow. Um, yeah. Well, we we stayed home and played and had Game Fest twenty three, uh, where mm. we played all the board games that we haven't played during the last twelve months. Uh, oh. Since the kids have been in school and and busy and o preoccupied, and we haven't had chances to do anything, so um, yeah, we basically like made it a a goal to to play something every day, and so um, and we we did a early gift exchange with Aaron's mom and her sister before they left to go up to um, her aunt's because we stayed here and they left there, um, and. My sister-in-law gave me one of those um, D and D. There's a new thing that came out last year. That's like a D and D case that has like a bunch of like miniature tokens in it. And I was like, well, that's that was actually one of the things when they did their release announcement of all the things they're going to release in the year. That was like, well, I could pass on that one. Um, and so she had it, but she included the 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 receipt. So I went to the game store and instead got. Uh, Dune Imperium, which is a board game that I've been looking at for a very long time, and got to play that several times, uh, as well as some new stuff that we got. Um, we kickstarted Daybreak when it was on Kickstarter. Actually, it was on Backer Kit, I guess. Um, and that's a game that's done by the people who did Pandemic, the the mm. main the lead game designer of Pandemic, um, except that it is about um, saving the environment. Um, and you are um, like a world power and you have to take measures to reduce your emissions and mm -hmm. um, and combat existing global emissions problems and, and problems derived from from greenhouse gases and stuff. And so it's um, it has all of the panic of a uh, pandemic wow. without the like yucky feeling <laughs> that I get with that. Um, yeah. We're like everybody's dead or everybody's infected <laughs> or the zombie plague has attacked everyone you know um instead it's like well the world is shit and we need to do better let's do better next time you know we um picked up forest shuffle which is a fun mm -hmm. beautiful game it's sort of in the vein of wingspan but mm -hmm. A little less complex a little i faster saw play. a preview the other night of a game 
called Wormspan. That is a dragon spinoff of Wingspan. Same rules, uh, maybe a couple of additional things, same designer, same company, but it's dragons instead of birds. <laughs> There's like 130 dr different types of dragons, and you're recruiting them to your their different like dragon uh, uh, locations and stuff. Dragon I I, I really like when a game gets popular enough that that like it can be parodied with the same rule, not parody, but like like the the same mm -hmm. rules that can be used elsewhere and just rethemed, and people are like, oh yeah, I totally play. That sounds awesome. Like <laughs> that's my other yeah, sign me up. <laughs> Not that Wingspan isn't great with all the... Yeah, no, Wingspan is amazing. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful game. But I also want to play with dragons, so... Yeah. <laughs> You're like, sometimes I'm in the mood for dragons. What can sometimes I dragons. Um, We picked up... A, well, Ty got another game Um, that... uh, It's like a um, co-op. Uh, it's, it's fast. It's the Fast and the Furious, which... But it's by I'm trying to remember the maker of it. The gameplay is really fascinating. It's really good gameplay, and the like, like enough like cool pieces and, um, uh, and complicated, which I didn't expect. Like I thought, mm -hmm. you know, I thought the movie franchise and thought, well, the bars, yeah, yeah, pretty low. I, and then I, I, I would be there with you, board game geek, and I was like, really, and playing it, I'm like, really, like this is, <laughs> uh, so. I guess cars are complicated. It's all about yeah. family. <laughs> Family's complicated. Family's complicated. It, it <laughs> is. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, it, the at the crux of it, you're either trying to like take over a semi truck or a helicopter or a, for a tank, maybe a tank, and you're working together uh, in cars. Like theoretically, like the whole set is moving down the highway, and so you're changing position in relation to this central peace and you're you know losing vehicles and taking like opponent vehicles and trying to destroy this central thing it's uh it's 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 fun it's fun um and then the last game i will talk about is uh i'm probably gonna get the name wrong it's by the people that made um uh parks and um uh, I don't, I don't remember who, what else they made. When they came out last year around Christmas, um, around holidays. Um. Anyway, this one is cool. It's like a dice game. It's like a little folding board, and you roll dice, and sometimes that adds more dice. So the more dice you have, the riskier it gets. And the foxes steal your chickens, and it takes very little time to play. And it's at a level Charlotte can play, but it's still fun. And um, so. Yeah, we did some gaming too. Some gaming too. Yeah, we always have this plan to, like, after we play board games or many board games, we're like, we should do this more often. And then, like, yeah. stuff happens. And, like, Gavin now has two other D&D &D games that he's in, one on Friday nights and one on Saturday nights or Friday afternoons into the night and Saturday afternoons into the night which then makes planning things a little bit more complicated. Um, and Aaron has uh, like aerials for like every other night of the week that we don't have D and D. So like timing is hard, um, but I think we made a, a, a tentative plan to, to make Sunday our gaming gaze, gaming day. Um, Sunday was previously our visit Aaron's folks day, um, but we might shift that to Saturday instead and then we can mm -hmm. have sunday free and then play games on sunday so we'll see how that goes that's our not 2024 resolution but does anybody here do you all do we do resolutions here is this a resolution place i think we talked about this last year I, we probably did this is probably the the, the time that, that that would yeah. happen i like doing um things that i have been doing things that i want to keep doing mm -hmm. yeah so it's just like I've been a lot better about drinking more water. So I want to keep keep that up. <laughs> I don't know. I like recognizing things that I'm already doing right because mm -hmm. I feel like it's better for morale than uh mm -hmm. than being like, 
we're starting from scratch. You're a piece of garbage. Shape yeah. up. <laughs> um, no resolution per se, but uh, I have ordered bees. I will have bees. <laughs> I in feel April. like that's a pretty big yeah, project big to thing. tackle. Yeah. Um. So, I, uh, yeah. So, I mean, like between now and the bees arrive, I need to get the hive set up and ready for them, and uh, you know, and learn what I'm doing. Um, I in the space between uh, my parents got here in the 26th and uh on my wish list i had a book about beekeeping because i've been curious and uh i read the entire thing like in two days in the midst of all the other craziness we were doing and just like it was like just constantly with me like i'd be walking through and i'd read like some and put it down on the kitchen counter or, you know uh dining room table or you know it was just with me for those those days and uh uh, and then that turned into like at the end of the day when they you know when we were all done uh me watching um youtube beekeepers on youtube <laughs> so how does your one... algorithm must be so strange <laughs> yeah how do, how i don't one... sign in and it offers we can like you can we can remember what you've watched and i'm like i don't think we should do that <laughs> how does one acquire bees how does that like yeah like there's I, I imagine it's it's like you need to have a queen yes right? so there is, are... is there not a, a a limited number like a finite number of queens uh there probably are but it's a significant number um and the hive will make more the hive um, will make more okay. yeah so the way you acquire bees uh it, from like a bee i just supplies. picture this weird dark market of bees <laughs> right um it's it's the the shop that I went to is um it's two guys um one is eighty and the other is in his low fifties and they've been partners for years and um so the beekeeping place is on like the backside of one of the guys' houses he's just got like a a building he set up and they've been there for twenty plus years and um you know it's a lot of supplies and you know for all the stuff you need but you can acquire them from a place like that in two ways they will sell you a package of beads which is three pounds of bees in one queen that's already mated and marked. So mated and marked means marked that there's a dot on her, so easier to see her when you're doing your hive inspection. And mated, just we confirm that this bee will lay eggs. Yeah. Um, and um, they come, it's like a wooden case that has screening on the side. Mm -hmm. And the queen is like in a, a little separate part by herself that has screen around it so that they can smell her and are used to her, but she can't, um, you know, they can't start it's in a small thing and they they can't really start making a hive there because they get captured from an existing hive they take the swarm they put it in there boom yeah. so so are they dormant when they ship them somehow no it you need to you need to be get uh well shipped in this case um it'll be local to me so they'll be getting oh, from local okay. hives but I was they can like, ship them who yeah are these post people carrying bees <laughs> it's it needs to happen around swarming time so that they're it's the time of year when they're ready to to start building comb um yeah and so it needs to be warm enough for that to happen so i mean you could do it as early as february you could order online and they could come in and um but then you take them and you open the container and you tap the container so the bees mostly fall into the hive and leave the rest sitting there and attach the queen to one of the uh, frames that goes in there and they will all come to the queen and then you put the hive back together and wish them luck and check on them in a few days um but hive inspections should be done about like once a week or so and adjust it accordingly and 10,000 bees for three pounds. So I'm going to have about 20,000 bees that I pick up on April the wow. 6th, I guess. Also, how do you weigh bees? I've got so many. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just yeah. like, I just feel like this process of being like, add a few more bees. Like, how do they <laughs> add a few more? Like another cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's that, that part I think is definitely a little, uh, a little sketchier. I think that they, uh, they must have, have like a pretty a good idea. Or like. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> that's the part I want to see. <laughs> yeah, that that part's a little sketchier. I mean, oh, 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 I guess I should say the other way you can buy them is you can buy what's called a, a nucleus, and a nucleus is like two or three frames or three or four frames that they've taken out of a hive with the queen and put in a box with a handle on that you can relocate. So basically, like a micro hive that um, you could pull in. So that's another way. It's it's a bit more expensive to go that route with a. Oh versus a package um are there other cons to doing it that way like does it not always yeah so that's like, why I'm like an organ transfer where it like could not take potentially or 
Yeah, they say they the suggestion is in your first year do two hives because you um first you'll learn a well, lot about bee work. behavior and one may one may swarm and leave. You yeah. suddenly show up and there's an empty hive or one um you know, you may you may have problems with and it you know yeah. may not uh survive. So there's a reality of like after you've been doing it for a little while, you can um if you have bees and you're coming into the season, you can pick up a a mate at a marked queen for a lot less than you pay for a package and just add a queen and um, you know, uh, if if you're if you don't have one at the start of the season with your existing bees, and off you go, or you can, uh, you know, replace the queen is pretty common as well. Expect to get one or two good years out of her, and then replace her. Which, okay, I don't like that at all. <laughs> I don't like that language. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's not uncommon when it's swarming season. It's not uncommon for for them to start having like uh, queen cells where they are uh, getting ready to. Uh, create a new queen and um apparently health of the hive uh sort of determines how effective of a queen she is mm. um, so mm. i i don't know i'm looking forward to just the uh like the natural like realization of just observing and seeing how this all functions and just it'll just be like one more puzzle piece and like there's all this stuff happening constantly in the world that i'm completely unaware of and this is another grain of sand in that pile so do you have a full like suit to to go out and and yeah you know, look I'm, at your bees in uh i have not ordered the suit yet but yes um yeah uh so online people are like some, some people, people say like, you don't need one yes yes many many <laughs> many of the beekeepers on youtube uh are are gloveless and suitless and they'll just put on a hood um and from what I gather is, is that's like really just comes down to like your comfort level with the bees and, um, you know, understanding how agitated they are. And if you know they're going to be agitated, you prep beforehand. Um, everyone pretty much says like your first couple of years, like just plan on always wearing the suit. Like it's just better safe than sorry. Uh, and you'll still get stung, which is fine. I mean, that's kind of the I think that's kind of the proposition with keeping bees is that, you know, you're going to get stung. Um, they travel up to three miles from their hive. So I took uh, Google Earth or Maps or whatever and figured out what the three mile radius is. Yes, and looked at it and went, "That's amazing!" Yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Now, do you have a name or branding for Gary's honey yet? No, and the first year you're not supposed to harvest the honey. No, I know, I, you... but I just like no. to know if there's like <laughs> not yet no nuggets of inspiration. <laughs> no, I space bees. Um, Hive mind. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I would be surprised if that's not already happening, but um, there's a, it seems like there's a lot of nerds into beekeeping, which makes sense. A lot of nerds <laughs> in there. It's cool, though. It's nice to have something that's like, well, I don't know if I'd describe bees as tactile, but like it's a process I, outside of yourself. <laughs> well, and to some extent, like I think there's several parts. One is the history. I mean, humans have been dealing with bees and eating honey for 20,000 years, you know? Um, I mean, th th that at some point someone was like, oh, if I take smoke from the campfire over by that hive, I can eat the honey. And that's really good. In fact, probably the best, like the tastiest sweet you could find at that point in time, you know? Um, and that's fascinating that, you know, that's available. And that coupled with like regulations in the US, for whatever reason, bees are really like easy like nobody has really any regulations Pe people are like oh gosh yeah you should absolutely have those like yeah <laughs> every neighborhood should a neighborhood should have some yes um yeah and so that's the other part is it's like there's no like yeah you you want to just yeah just do it it's fine good luck but these things sting people yeah it's probably fine i mean alcohol is legal yeah, I, well, you have to show an ID. Like uh, with beekeeping, it's even less than the bees, that. They just let you have them. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I mean, I, like I, I went to buy them. The guys like, have you bought from us before? No, is this your first uh, first time? Yep. Oh, cool. Well, let me know if we can recommend some books, and we have this class coming up if you're interested. Awesome. That was it. Like there was no like you, know, you can prove your level of knowledge. No, good luck. I, I got an I got an ad on don't YouTube, eat them. Uh, that sent me down a rabbit hole of discovering new and fascinating regulatory loopholes. Mm. Uh, one, 
with regards uh, to cannabis in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, the ad was for a company called Mood, and they were advertising legal weed. Like, yep, yeah, it's fully legal. You can just buy it online and we'll ship it to you from our warehouse in, I don't know, Oklahoma, I think maybe. Um, and I'm like, really though? Like, is it just like CBD and they're calling it something else? Um, and while, uh, so here, here's, here's, the, here's the whole spiel. Um, THC is a psychoactive drug that is regulated federally. And we pretty much yes. understand that. Um, the particular compound that is regulated is a particular compound in THC called Delta 9 THC. Mm -hmm. Um, there are two things that are derived from the same plant uh, that are unregulated, and that mm -hmm. is THCA, which is the compound that, uh, when heated, turns into THC, mm -hmm. um, and Delta-8 yes. THC, which is like the same stuff but less kind of and that's what this company sells is those things is it, um, it so yeah, you can so just go Delta there and, and so you can just go there and say yep i'm over 21 and then put in an address and a credit card and you get some stuff hmm. so i've had delta 8 gummies and um it's a different it's a little i sound like a pothead it's a little harsher it's not quite as pleasant mm -hmm. um but it's effective and nice way to spend a Saturday. So we got some Delta 8 flour and I think some THCA microdose gummies. And the flour felt like nothing. Mm. But the gummy knocked me out for like four hours. Mm. And it was weird I because it was because it was billed as a microdose and we have gummies and we usually like break them in like half or whatever um and then divide the half between the two of us so like so i was thinking oh, if it's billing itself as this then i don't need to worry about that i can just like uh yeah no that was not the case and it didn't feel any less than anything else that we've ever done which was also weird because after the first thing hardly did anything it's like well obviously this is just going to be crap too so mm -hmm. don't need to worry about it in fact, <laughs> that's all you do, need to worry about it in fact do worry about it <laughs> Trying to look at the brand that I used. Mm. But it was interesting, just especially like after that second experience, thinking about like, and this is just something I can get on the internet. And I know that's that feels novel for you, Allison, because you can just get things on the internet in Canada, but like in, uh, in you know, Podunk America. <laughs> <laughs> like I can just, it's like DoorDash. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> probably is too with the delivery services though it, yeah well like what was so funny is that in my town there's a dispensary and mm -hmm. there was another uh storefront that opened up on our like main street actually and um another dispensary wanted to go in and um the city hall like basically voted against it because they were like we've got one and we don't need another like we don't need to just have have our main street like starting to be filled with like vape shops and dispensers i mean that's fair and i think i was like i don't i think that's a good decision like it was also like as far because we have they have a small town as opposed to like victoria or something yeah it's a small town and also the storefront in question they would have had to block they had the, all these glorious windows and oh, they would have had to privacy yeah. them yeah and all that and it's just like it kind of would not ruin the look but like i'm like no it's fine and also i'm just like we like what for the size of my town i'm like one dispensary is probably we're probably good <laughs> yeah oh, i don't know thing? that's the link yeah that's the stuff that i've had 3g um 3G. they have a lot more products now it when i ordered from them they had like yes or no or i think they maybe had four flavors for of delta 8 edible no yes Yes. Yeah. So I don't know. 
the the jury's still out on 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 that but I, it was an interesting like rabbit hole to go down because it was like wait like surely not though <laughs> what and what is the difference and like like how is this one thing in this one form not re like regulated but this thing that is going to be in that form also as soon as you consume it not regulated yeah and it's just the difference of a different compound which is yeah. so like but it's it's because of the it's because of the farm bill, which is the the big thing they signed that basically made hemp widely available and and made it available to be able to get to to get hemp and, and like hemp derived CBD products like that's and the whole explosion of that like it was that same bill that like like wrote out those exclusions or inclusions or whatever um, and I I mean I'm learning so many things about government. Uh, these days that like the the from the book that I Gary and I well Gary started and I'm reading um, slowly um, that it doesn't shock me at all that like legislators fail to read fine print or think thoroughly through like specific things about like well perhaps this is a thing that we might want to also either do or not do like make a decision yeah. on one side of the fence or the other but like the weird in betweeny stuff uh mm -hmm. and and creating these loopholes is is a is an interesting take yeah a hundred percent i'm almost to the end of that book i'm still i, I, I think i think two Gary, thirds of the way through i think you need to skip to to whatever that chapter I told you about chapter ten or whatever where it starts talking about product management and then read from there I don't think that you will miss out on anything important after that because I think that's the sort of part where it kind of shifts into this is what we're doing well and this is how we can improve things as opposed to being like here's all the shit that we did bad <laughs> what I've read so far it makes a very compelling argument that uh, digital services in the government are an absolute unmitigated dis unmitigated disaster and uh, compelling and mm -hmm. uh and i'm happy to add to that <laughs> the part the part that i was just uh reading most recently was talking about how um companies like oracle have lobbied to the government against inclusion of digital professionals in government or or uh like oh, services you... like like the digital the government digital <sighs> services and like because a they want those contracts themselves and mm -hmm. b i think largely because they see the government as incompetent and, able, and unable to do those things like but if we just mm -hmm. had more people from in technology in government then we wouldn't be incompetent let, and we could do the shit ourselves let me give a huge shout out right now to the gsa search.gov team who are punching way above their belt with the service they offer and the team size they do it with uh it's it's really um really an inspiring team to interface with like they get the value they deliver and they are super hands-on and will do whatever they can to support users of their service. Um, so search.gov powers search uh, on nasa.gov um, across, I think, six domains at the moment and more to come and uh, super people to work with and GSA uh, and not just technical. Too, yeah. 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 I, I mean, I, the first interaction I had with them, I left that meeting and I was like, how, how are they allowed to exist? Like they're, <laughs> they're so, like they're so, and it's not just like it's not just the technical side. Like they're good people, and they understand all the challenges of working in government. So when they have someone technical, yeah. like they're a cheerleading team as much as they are a technical partner. I mean, phenomenal, phenomenal to work with. So I hope this makes it back to them, and I it's a reminder <laughs> that I send them a message and tell them thanks for their their hard work. And um, yeah, yep. I wish I could sponsor people to come to Canada that aren't related to me. <laughs> <laughs> and just like gather a little community <laughs> um ty is insistent that he's gonna move to canada as soon as he's as soon as he can uh, i'm okay yeah. i was the same way <laughs> yeah i actually followed through which surprised people <laughs> i mean 
I won't be surprised if he does, and I won't be if he doesn't. Um, a good entryway is uh, through school, because once you have a student visa, it's you can kind of wiggle wiggle your way through. That's I will mention you, that to him. That's not how you got there, is it? No, no, because I like I met Robin and went common law sponsorship instead. But yeah. I was told it was easier, but I don't even know if that's true. <laughs> it took me long enough. Mm. Now I'm trying to think of New Year's resolutions. I'm like, I don't know. I got yeah. the purple hair back. So my my goals for 2024 are well, I, I wrote about it on my blog. I, I have a tentative goal to have some sort of working copy, uh, like final-ish working copy of the thing that I'm writing mm -hmm. and with a stretch goal of maybe making it actually available for like other people broadly, like nice. maybe just like compiling an ebook, like an EPUB by myself. But like, you know, I do, I, I did some research uh, about like how to self-publish and like, you know, do it yourself versus going through a service versus whatever. Um, and I do have thoughts of of that being a future destination. I just don't know if that would be done before, you know, mm -hmm. December thirtieth, thirtieth, twenty twenty four, and and yeah, play more games probably. <laughs> so my those are my twenty twenty four goals. <laughs> Board games. And Gary yeah. is just bees. Bees. Twenty twenty four bees. Twenty twenty four is the year of bees. <laughs> Um, it's a little bit of a life hack. I mean, maybe we'll see who knows how it turns out. Uh, only because I have a dear friend that um, does dog training. And so he talks often about how it requires him to be present, you know, in, uh, and there's, you know, it's the natural world and, and on and on. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. But I don't I mean a dog would be a lot. And this is a very different take on that, but similar in the sense that, um, you know, there's not like, it's not like you can be distracted. Like you need to be mm. there and do your, be present with the bees and do your thing. And so mm -hmm. I think that there's, I think part and parcel to that is um, it, it kind of forces like some mindfulness activities um, along the way. Um, and, and also um, a good opportunity to practice not controlling success or failure of something like I can set it up and there's some factors I control and some that I can't. And, uh, you know, that's a really good point. I think so often we're focused on the outcome rather than being like, well, I did the best, like I did the things and hmm. then nature came. <laughs> it's, it's review season at work. Um, mm -hmm. which is funny. Um, I have two people that report to me that I need to review. Um, which is fine. And they're both, I mean, they're both easy to review and we have regular one on one. So there's nothing, there's no, I mean, there's no surprises or, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really like, well, I pulled up our one on one notes and, you know, mostly use those to write your review and, uh, you know, a reminder that, you know, you need to be more selfish with your time and set better boundaries. And, and it's a nine to five job. It's just the internet, you know, we're not saving the world and, and that kind of stuff, you know. Um, and I say these things and then we finish the call and I laugh because it's like, it, it may be more convincing if you actually did that yourself. <laughs> like <laughs> it's true. <laughs> people would, people would buy into that better if you actually did it. So. Um, Trickle down. Yeah. I'm not sure I'm saying that. I'm not actually sure that I'm saying that that's um, a resolution. Um don't I'm worry. Hoping... This is this is a very safe, non space. Scary. Space. Yeah. <laughs> and and I just say that like I don't think it's resolution because I don't know that I, I don't know that I'm able to do that, especially with this client. Like I can't disconnect enough. You know, uh, I like a great example is this is recorded late and be, uh, because of me because I couldn't say no to a bug that nobody there was no physical harm or emotional harm coming to anybody in fact the real the hindsight stepping away what what the real experience would be is someone loaded us on the phone and be like that's weird i thought i like clicked on a different article and and they that would be the the real experience is that i clicked on something <laughs> and confusion. Ended up the yeah so like the, the actual like net impact in the world was like 
completely inconsequential, but it seemed in the moment like a very um, big deal to the to the image of the agency. Why, you know, that's a hmm, that's a, that's a really good example of where I'm not setting that boundary appropriately. So, yeah, I think having things outside of that context, like completely outside of that context, um, is a healthy way of having or establishing some sort of rules. Like I, I appreciate that I have this side project that is completely and utterly unrelated to the thing that I do to acquire yeah. <laughs> resources yeah. to pay my bills and put food on mm -hmm. the table and whatever. Um, and maybe, you know, maybe there is a, a future, perhaps a distant future where this is my source of income, but probably not. <laughs> I'm realistic. Well, and then you'd have to find something else to be your, your side interest, right? <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, I feel like if I was writing full time, um, I could probably do a lot more with my time. <laughs> it's it, it's funny when when I talk to people, a few people I've talked to about bees, they're like, "Oh, are you gonna sell honey?" And I'm like, "Oh, I just thought you'd eat honey and like give it away or something." That was my thought. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I'm like sell it. Like that just seems like so. My much branding work. question was purely like, "Oh, that's so, that would be yeah. something fun to do." Like my brother's. Oh baking, no! It totally. My brother's will baking be. bread, and I was like, "Oh, cool! You can make a fun little label." Like, mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no. That that's a and that's a conversation with the kids too. Is like, I, so I'm going to be getting um at least two suits so that oh, um, the kids interested in coming down with me. D uh, down, it's like going to be down the hill behind my house is where the highs will be. So okay, not like not down. your basement bees or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, so it'll. I mean, we'll see. A, a grand experiment that you I'll train I, them to do the beard of bees. <laughs> so that works. Because the person doing it has put like pheromones on their face, yeah. And so the bees just like, oh, yeah. And they tend to droop like that because they're just climbing on each other, and gravity is still effective if you're not flying. And so I know, I know. There's all and, sorts of things, really, you could do with bees. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm just gonna let them do their thing, do what I can to support that. That's. Thank you for listening to Binary Jazz. If you like this episode, you can subscribe to us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can visit us online at binaryjazz.us or follow us on Twitter at at binaryjazz. Special thanks to Serpiente Negra Ensemble for the use of their tracks for our intro and outro music. You can find them online at serpientenegra.bandcamp.com. Don't forget that you can ask us a question through the forum on the website or on Twitter, and we'll read it aloud on the next episode of Binary Jazz.